Today I'm out in Plano, Texas at the Lexus headquarters getting a first look at the IS500. Now this is not a full on ISF, instead Lexus has decided to go in a slightly different direction and with this vehicle they're very directly targeting something like the BMW M340i rather than the M3. So even though under the hood we have essentially the 5 liter V8 F engine from the RCF, this is not designed to target the BMW M3 and as a result will likely be less expensive. Although important thing to keep in mind, we don't know pricing just yet. Since the IS500 is not a full on ISF, there are less exterior changes versus the rest of the IS lineup. So this looks an awful lot like the IS350 F Sport, and that's why they're also calling this model an F Sport. We have the same distinctive LED headlights right here, no fog lights below, and the squiggly sort of grill going on up front. Moving around to the side, probably the first thing you're going to notice are the wheels and tires. Because this is an F Sport, not a full-on F, we don't find the same kind of aggressive tire compounds, and we don't have a torque vectoring or axle in the rear like you do find available in the RCF. These are 265 with Bridgestone Potenza tires, so they are pretty grippy, just not as grippy as the Max Performance Summer tires that you could logically swap in aftermarket. Since this lives in a land between full-on F and F Sport, we get IS500 right here, but we get the stacked quad exhaust tips that you find in a regular F model. On the back, we find some subtle changes versus the lesser versions of the IS, but again, very similar to what we find in the 350 F Sport. In the luxury segment, there aren't too many naturally aspirated V8 engines left. If you want one outside of a full-size SUV, there are only two options, this Lexus 5-liter V8 and a Genesis 5-liter V8. But Genesis isn't putting it in a compact sedan, and Lexus is. This is the only naturally aspirated V8 engine left in this segment. 472 horsepower at over 7,000 RPM gives this a very, very different character to a BMW M340i or a Mercedes-Benz C43 AMG or something like an Audi S4, all direct competitors theoretically to the IS500. If you're looking for not only a rocket ship, but something that has a bit more of a muscle car vibe, this is really going to be the only option. Obviously, we haven't been able to zero to 60 test this vehicle at home yet, but expect performance numbers to be pretty similar to that mid-level in performance from the competition. The muscular V8 burble is certainly one reason to get the IS500 over the turbocharged competition, but logically, the way this vehicle delivers the performance is also a big reason to get this. Now, the IS500 is not going to be available with all-wheel drive like we find in some of the competition. This is going to be rear-wheel drive only. That may disappoint some people living in America's snow belt, but it means that the performance and the handling ability of this vehicle are going to be very, very sharp, something that I was definitely able to test out on the test track. However, I wasn't able to drive the IS500. I was with the professional driver in the right seats. Now, a few details about the footage that you may see here in just a second is that that vehicle was not running on the stock tires. It did have upgraded tires and slightly different brake pads, but other than that, the rest of the vehicle was exactly what we're going to see with the IS500 F Sport performance. Changes to the interior are fairly minor versus the rest of the IS lineup. The front seat design is very similar to the regular versions of the IS F Sport, but we do have a slightly different fabric going on here in the middle of the seat. This is an Alcantara-like fabric. These particular seats are heated and ventilated. We also have that faux suede fabric on the doors, but the bulk of the dashboard remains the same. We have the same sort of infotainment system right here in the middle of the dashboard. This is one of the later versions of the Lexus infotainment system, but not the absolute newest that we're going to find in the new 2022 Lexus NX. Below this, we have some large air vents, dual zone automatic climate control right there, still a single slot optical disc player, controls for the heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, pretty traditional gated shifter right down there, the controller for the Lexus infotainment system, two large cup holders, and then an Alcantara capped center console. The instrument cluster is a 7-inch LCD unit with a physical ring that slides side to side. Importantly, this is different than the LCD cluster that we find in the RCF. We don't have all the same kind of readouts that we find in that more performance-oriented model. There are paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel, but again, the steering wheel is very similar to the rest of the lineup. And again, we have F-Sport badges right down there at the bottom. The official 0-60 to 60 time from Lexus is 4.5 seconds. I suspect it could go a little bit faster if you replace the tires. 0-60 to 60 time is probably traction limited. That's something that we see in the RCF as well. Remember that this vehicle does not have the torque vectoring or axle that we find in the RCF, so that may affect 0-60 to 60 performance. Based on the tire compounds and the tire sizes, I would estimate 60 to 0 is probably going to be between 115 and 110 feet. During my time in Texas, I was able to get behind the wheel of the RCF as well as get driven around the track in the IS500 F Sport Performance. The biggest thing you'll notice between these two vehicles is that the IS500 is softer out on the track. That's because the suspension tune is largely similar to the IS350. 
safety. It's not as aggressive as the RCF because this isn't a full-on F product. And I think that's a good balance because honestly, most track designed cars just aren't as daily driver livable. And with the IS500, this was designed to be daily driver livable in the same way that the S4, the C43, and the M340i are. One additional caveat to keep in mind is that Lexus swapped out the tires on this particular vehicle for more aggressive summer tires. That's something that you could do yourself aftermarket. They're exactly the same size as the stock IS500 tires, but they're not the same tire compound. You can, however, definitely feel some body roll, definitely some tip and dive and lean and squeal in the corners because the suspension setup is not designed to be track aggressive. One last thing to keep in mind is that you can hear a glorious exhaust note in this video, but I don't know if that is gonna be the final production exhaust. I was not able to get confirmation as to whether this IS500 had any kind of aftermarket exhaust tweaks. It did appear to be a little bit louder at idle than the IS500 that I was able to video earlier in the video. However, it does sound pretty good. It sounds very, very similar to the RCF. So logically, this is something that you could do yourself if you wanted a slightly more aggressive exhaust note. But I was able to rev the IS500 in the parking lot with the regular exhaust, and it still had a very, very similar exhaust sound. Bottom line, the IS500 should be an awful lot of fun, but a different kind of fun than we find in the turbocharged competition. There's no turbo lag, instead you get very linear accelerations. The power builds as the engine revs on up to about 7,000 RPM. That's gonna give this more of a classic luxury car or luxury performance car feel than we find in most of the European competition, or something like the Acura TLX Type S. But very unlike the TLX Type S, the IS500 is much better balanced, so I suspect this is going to be not only significantly faster zero to 60, but also significantly more fun out on your favorite track. As I said at the beginning of the video, we don't know where the IS500 is going to be priced. It's probably going to be somewhere in the very wide range between $55,000 and $65,000, but where exactly it's going to land, we don't really know yet. I honestly hope that it ends up pretty close to $55,000 because that's where the majority of the competition sits, including the new Acura TLX Type S, of course the BMW M340i, the C43 AMG, etc. But this is a slightly different animal than the rest of the competition because instead of a turbocharged engine, we have that V8 engine under the hood. That's going to give it a slightly different weight balance and a very different character to the European competition. Again, peak horsepower happens over 7,000 RPM, and in a turbocharged engine, not a lot's happening at 7,000. Now, does that mean this is going to be as quick 0 to 60 as some of the European competition? We just don't know yet. I suspect that the M340i might just be a little bit faster 0 to 60, but I don't think it's going to be quite as much fun as this. The Lexus IS has excellent driving dynamics. That's something that I've noted about the IS in the past. The problem with the IS has been, it just hasn't been as swift as the German competition. And the IS500 is definitely a good way to fix that. And I love the fact that Lexus decided not to make this a full-on ISF. Because unless they had decided to stuff a twin-turbo 6 with 400 horsepower or a twin-turbo V8 engine under the hood, it wouldn't have been able to compete with something like the BMW M3. But the IS500, this on the other hand, makes an awful lot of sense. Because it's giving us similar or more power to most of the competition with strong rear-wheel drive dynamics and the excellent and sharp handling and steering that we find in the rest of the IS lineup. I just hope that Lexus ends up pricing it right. Be sure and stay tuned because I will have my hands on this relatively soon for a full test drive and review. Uh, <clears throat> Be sure and stay tuned because I will have my hands on this shortly for a full test drive and review. This production has likely been a little bit delayed by the ongoing global pandemic, but it should be on dealer lots sometime by the end of this year. So be sure and stay tuned, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll see all of you next week.